We're here with Jeff Lemire, the creator of the recently released Underwater Welder. Good to see you. Thanks. Good to see you, too. So this book has been, I mean, almost a passion project for you. It took you close to, what, four years to bring it to existence? Is that right? Yeah, I, I think somewhere around four years, like 2008, I got the original idea for it and kind of did some sketches and just a loose plot. But then I became so busy with, in between that time, I started working at DC and Vertigo and had monthly books and all the stuff that I had to do. So it was so hard to find time to work on it. Uh, literally, it was just stealing, stealing days here and there to just find some time. And it was so hard because something like that, you need to get in a kind of into a flow and momentum of the story and, and get into it. And it would be, you know, I'd get to work on it for a week and then I might have five months where I don't even think about it. And then you have to reinvest in the story again. And it was really difficult to be honest, but like you said, it, it really is a passion project. So um, it keep, kind of keeps you going and keeps you focused on it. So for people who may not be familiar with this story, give us in a nutshell what it's about. It's tricky. It's um, It's been described as sort of a, a really heartfelt Twilight Zone episode. Mm -hmm. um, it's about a guy, obviously, he's an underwater welder on a, an oil rig off the coast of a fictional small town in Nova Scotia, and him and his wife are expecting their first child. Uh, and there's a lot of pressure he's feeling about impending fatherhood, and that pressure is obviously mirrored with this job where he works deep under the ocean and this very dangerous work, and uh, all that kind of builds up and builds up, and then one day he experiences something strange deep beneath the sea and when he surfaces he's in a different world than the one he left and he needs to sort of mine his own past and his own childhood to figure out his, how to move forward with his life and get back to his son and his, his unborn son and his wife so yeah, yeah i mean you t talk about a twist i'm not going to i'm not going to really spoil it for people but you're reading along you're 140 pages into the book and then all of a sudden it takes this you know right turn into the twilight zone <laughs> was that something that came about when you were initially coming up with a story or is that something where as you're writing over you know and producing it over the four years that you sort of came upon yeah well that without again without giving away what happened that was always a central idea to okay. it um where that happens in the story and how big a role it plays shifts and change and evolves over time and it's even it's hard to almost hard to remember my original idea i've gone i went through so many versions of the story and so many versions of the the plot and stuff, trying to make it all come together because um, it really is kind of combining the fantastic elements and keeping it focused on, you know, real human uh, emotion and characters and, and it relationships and things. It's really difficult. So trying to find the balance between the fantasy and the reality is tough. And I know I went through a lot of different iterations of the script until I found the, I had the balance, you know. You had a really neat trick with the art in here. In the above water scenes, you stick mostly to a nine panel grid uh, yeah, 12, actually. It, 12. yeah and it's black and white yep. there's no gray tones and everything is very rigid and defined and then when you go underwater you bring in the grays everything gets a little bit yeah. loose and you really start to play with your panel layouts and page layouts again was this something you had initially thought of how did this come that, about to decide yeah, that, that is actually like kind of the first I idea i had for the book where when he was on the surface um the pressure he's feeling in his life would be f reflected in the, these really rigid kind of claustrophobic 12 panel grids mm -hmm. uh, and then as soon as he went underwater he was free and then it just explodes into huge double page flashes and you bring in washes to make it feel wet and fluid and you get the sense that when he's underwater he feels it's just so open and free to him you know and he needs to find how to bring that back above really and that's what happens with the art as the book goes forward so your life must have changed over the four years that you were working on this. You talked about how your career, you know, sort of took off and got, you know, a lot bigger. You got a lot more recognition working with DC and all. How did that change your relationship to the story, not just on a workload level, but did you find yourself closer or further away to the characters as it was going on? Uh, it's interesting, you know, I feel like um, the more stuff I did for DC and the more, even the Vertigo stuff, oh, well, it's very personal and stuff. Uh, I really felt like I needed to do another book to follow up Essex County, uh, a book that had the same kind of flavor and the same feel and aesthetically kind of was linked to it. And the more stuff I did for DC and the further I got away from Essex County, the more pressure I felt to produce another book like that. So I, I put a ton of pressure on myself with this book. I was beyond being a perfectionist. I redrew entire scenes over and over and over again, you know, just, you know, stuff that no one else would even notice a difference. I was just like obsessed with details and I lost perspective on the whole thing, you know, and 
Uh, at the end of the day, you just have to stop and say, you know, when I did Essex County, I had none of that pressure. I just did what I wanted, you know. And I, to find that place again is really hard with all these external pressures. But, um, so yeah. But as far as getting far away from the characters and stuff, I always felt really close to the character. And, um, you know, I became a father myself during the course of creating the book. So I think when I started the book, it was kind of about my own anxieties about fatherhood, just like him. And then as I became a father and all those anxieties completely disappeared, the second you see your child and I just fell in love with him and being a parent, you can see the story change and it turned into a, a story about embracing fatherhood. And uh, I, I think it's kind of must be, I hopefully it's cool to see that happen on the page, see the artist and then the character go through that, you know. So. Yeah, it is. I mean, for, for a supernatural story and all, you, I think you nailed it with the emotion, that the emotion and the tension and the pressure is what really drives this story. Yeah, I feel a lot of my stuff now, there's a real balance between fantastic elements, like even Animal Man, with like, you have these dark fantasy horror elements, but as long as you keep it all rooted to the family, the Baker family, um, and all those things are just sort of uh, metaphors or extensions of what they're going through psychologically, it works. And it's the same with this, like it, there are fantastic sort of sci-fi elements to it, but as long as it's all rooted in the characters and comes from that, it works. So that balance again is hard to find sometimes now talking about balance for a minute now underwater welder is your most recently released book but also what's recently come out is one of your very earliest books yeah. lost dogs which this was something that was initially self-published yeah. is that correct yeah so what's it like now looking at this uh, what is this 10 12 years old is that right oh no, you know it's like 2005 so, okay, so seven years old yeah. What's it like looking at I this? Look at <laughs> you know, I, I can't even look at the welder anymore. You know, as soon as I'm done something, I, all I see is flaws. And so, but it, a weird thing happens where there'll be like a two or three year period where I can't look at stuff. And then it's far enough away that it's like I'm not attached to it at all anymore. And I can kind of look back and see the charm in it and kind of get past the flaws. So I kind of got to that point with this where it's very rough visually. And, but you see, I think you see my personality in there still. And I, you know, I, I know as a fan of art and comics and music or whatever, I like seeing formative works by artists that I like. And I like seeing a progression of style and stuff. So I think it, it's nice to put out old stuff and people have access to that. Yeah, I actually bought this one and then got Underwater Welder. So I read them almost completely back to back. And yeah. you, you're right, you, you are definitely in this. I mean, someone who's picking up your work now will definitely see you in this. But it's interesting to see your progression yeah. as you've gone on. There's a lot more hope in my work now than maybe there was <laughs> then. I was yeah. Lost Dogs is kind it's of a great. dark. It's yeah. very dark, yeah. <laughs> so let's wrap this up the way we always do yeah. by asking you, what's your issue? What's that comic you've read that's so crazy or wild or out there that when you're talking to your friends about comics, you're like, hey, have you read this? There's a couple, and it's not so much that they're crazy or out there. They're just they're just those little gems that I remember, you know. Um, one of them was this, uh, I'm a huge Hellblazer fan and a huge Dave McKean fan, and everyone remembers the issue Dave McKean did with Neil Gaiman called Hold Me, and they kind of re reference back to that. But for me, he actually did another issue with Jamie Delano that no one talks about, but it's like, it's for me, it's a masterpiece. It kind of, and it's, it is wild. Like, it jumps forward to Constantine when he's like 60, and he has a twin who he's, and they're living in this castle, and it's just, but McKean's art is brilliant, and you never see that level of art on a, a monthly comic book. It's so bizarre, and I, I love those little gems. And like, you know, there was a Kevin uh, Nolan Batman and the Outsiders annual, the same thing, where it's just Kevin Nolan, who hasn't done a lot of interiors, so it's like a full 40 pages of his early work, and it's just gorgeous, you know. I love those little gems that, that people don't know about, you know. And it's cool to see someone who, you know, is, like you said, working away at a monthly book who's really able to pour that kind of effort into it. Yeah, those, those level of artists usually can't do monthly books, so it's awesome. When you see one of them just do one issue, it feels so special, you know. Yeah. So speaking of monthly books, just let, let's talk really quickly for, for a moment. What's it been like for you going and doing the, the monthly schedule? Because you've been working on, on a couple of books for, for DC Vertigo that yeah have to come out on a monthly, every 30 days schedule. Yeah, it's tricky. I mean, um, I'm really good with time management, obviously, or else I couldn't pull all this stuff off. But I, the monthly thing is good because I, I can be a bit of a per perfectionist. So um, with Sweet Tooth or whatever, I just don't have the choice. I just have to let it go. you know. I don't have I don't have time to redraw anything. It just I send it to my editor and it, it comes out, you know. And that's been good for me. I think I, it, it kind of allows you to let go and not overthink things. And, and uh, but then I also like having something self-contained like the welder where I can do that, you know. <laughs> so. 
Are we going to see something like that from you in the future? You have something like this in the pipeline? Yeah, the thing with the books like Essex County and The Welder is I feel like they're almost like little little marking posts at different points in my life, you know, and, you know, Essex County is really about where I grew up and where I came from, and The Welder was kind of about me becoming a father, and I feel like you need to live a bit of life before you have another one of those books in you, so they're probably like four or five years at least between each one, but, uh, so I don't know what the next one is yet, I gotta, you know, ask me in a couple of years. Kids first trip to the hospital, trust me, been there. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, well, thank you very much for meeting with us, and all the best to you. Thanks very much.